All right, so what is up, guys? It is Nisha here today, and today I got you guys a UA deck profile. Uh, if uh, you watched uh, some of the combos that I uploaded uh, sometime last week, I think Thursday, Friday, um, I did two combo videos about uh, some combos link uh, that UAs can do in link format, and so I thought I would do you know an actual deck profile of the deck. Now, unfortunately, I would have done it you know in real life because obviously I had the actual cards. But the deck itself did actually get uh, lost at locals. Um, it was kind of my fault. Like, I left it out and, uh, you know, I kind of, like, forgot about it for a minute. And then all of a sudden, like, I turn around and, you know, all of a sudden it's gone. But, you know, things happen. And it wasn't that big of a loss since it was only UAs. Nothing in here was too expensive. Um, but, you know, I did lose quite a few cards. And, you know, it, it did, like, depress me quite a bit. But, uh, you know, I do still have my main... Uh, dino deck so um, it didn't really hit me down too much so yeah let's just get into it um, I'm not really gonna explain it too much because uh, I feel like uh, you know at this point if you've watched any of my other UA videos I made a UA deck profile and a Yugo Pro Duels for it like sometime last month in, in August so I'm gonna leave a link to those in the description and a link to the combos at the end of the video as well so yeah well, let's just get into it uh, so one Dreadnought Dunker two Rival Rebounder and so the reason why I now you're gonna see that I'm not playing blockbacker anymore. This is more of a speed focused deck. So um, blockbacker is you know obviously a defense oriented card, and it's not that important anymore. Um, you know because once links really become a thing, blockbacker wouldn't be able to do anything to it because blockbacker um, has to change the battle vision of the monster that was special summoned before it can negate the special summon monster's effect. So. It wouldn't really be too useful against Link monsters just because their battle positions can't be changed. So yeah, um, I took Blockbacker out. And uh, yeah, so we're playing Double re Rival Rebounder just to have more special summoning power. Uh, double Slugger and Double Perfect Ace, uh, that was pretty standard. And then the Triple Midfielder uh, for a total of 10 UA monsters. Um, so yeah, next we're going into our two Gofus. Gofu is your best combo starter. Um, you know, he brings out the two tokens when he's summoned, and then you go into two Link Spiders, or you can go straight into a Proxy Dragon into a Mrs. Radiant. Now, if you're looking at the extra deck here, um, you probably should play two Link Spider, but, um, because, you know, obviously part of the combos, some of the combos that I did was using, uh, two Link Spiders, but, you know, there are times where I drew the Predaplants as well, and so instead of having to use both Link Spiders, like, off the bat, I just went, okay, one link spider and then summon out the Preda plant and then you went into uh invoker and then that's when you know um i did all my combos and went to mrs radiant i didn't use two link spiders to go into the uh mrs radiant i used one link spider and the mx saber invoker so yeah um so three isn't completely necessary although um it is it would be better but, you know, you want to keep this UA focused and he can only he's only useful when you have no monsters on board, which won't be all the time. There are going to be times where you have monsters on board and, you know, you're, gonna, you're not going to have anything to do with them. So, yeah, uh, Devil Assault Halberd uh, for Invoker or just in case, you know, you have a level 5 or 6 UA monster and you need a Tribute Summon, you know, uh, Assault Halberd is your way to go. The Predator Plant Engine um, searches Instant Fusion and uh, gets you MX Saber Invoker, gets you Midfielder. Or, you know, lets you go into crazy Link combos. You know, it's a free Mrs. Radiant or, you know, a free Ultimaya. You know, it can, it can do a whole bunch of things for this deck. So it's real useful. Uh, I was trying it at three. Um, I think three clogs, two is the, a, a great number as long as you don't draw into Cobra itself. You know what I'm saying? And even if you do, um, I guess you can just use it for discard fodder for a perfect ace. Or, you know, you can, you can when you have Gofu and level 3, um, you summon out Gofu and then you special summon out uh, the two tokens and then you normal summon out your Cobra and then Sacred Summon into Cypher Lord Omega. And you see Omega's in the side deck here. So I actually had a problem with this deck because um, even in the combo videos, uh, there was a problem with me because uh, I realized is that like this, like this deck to have everything that it needs would have like more than 15 cards in the extra deck so um one of the combos i did with um charge warrior and coral dragon that's not something you have to do that's not even a combo you have to play 
Um, you can like take these two out and put in the Link Spider and the Cyphering Lord Omega, because uh, like that would be the optimal build. But you know, obviously, the second combo that I did when you know I only had Link Sp uh, Love Leader, uh, Gofu, and the Predator Plant, that's when you know Love Leader was a lot more useful in you know going through uh, a lot more cards and got me more advantage just off of using it. So um, it's something that. You're probably going to have to figure it out yourself because I don't like I don't think I could play test this deck enough to know whether Omega is worth running more than Coral Dragon and Charge Warrior um, just because Love Leader exists and the only level 5 singer we play is Nat Beast. We don't even play high speed Roy to Chimbara or Denglong, which are two are two other options that I think you should also consider when playing this deck. So yeah, um, just just know that the extra deck space in this deck is real tight. You can take out the Invoked Raijin. I, I just wanted to try it, you know, just in case I draw Gofu and Instant Fusion. And, uh, you know, I need a non-tuner that's a level 5, you know, Raijin's there. If I don't have uh, the UA level 5s or a signing deal, you know what I'm saying? So, yeah. Uh, next, we got one Ghost Ogre, one Maxi, just two Hand Traps. Uh, Ash Blossom wasn't actually in the deck. Thank God, <laughs> if that would have gotten stolen from me, I, I would have like lost, I would have lost my mind, man. So one glow up bulb, uh, just to go into Nat Beast, and you know if you saw the combos, you you already know. But um, it also helps in tribute summoning, and uh, it's also it, it, it's just a very helpful card to have around. Um, you know, it's I think the best part is that you get to normal summon it. So it's like if you have a salt halberd, and glow up bulb, or even instant fusion and glow up bulb, you. Either summon a, you special summon out Assault Halberd or use Instant Vision to go into uh, Carbonala Warrior, uh, level 4. And then you Synchro Summon, you Normal Summon Glow Up Bulb and then you Synchro Summon into Nat Beast. You know, real free. And if Mrs. Radiant is on board, you know, uh, Nat Beast is going to be at 2700, so that's pretty strong. Love Leader is real crazy in this deck. It can loop itself a lot. Um, although you don't really get too much off of it, um, it can still be used for Tribute Summon, so... Uh, like, just use it as much as you can. You know, turn to your level 5s into level 4s, um, which can help go into Tornado Dragon. And um, it can use be used as material for, like, Proxy Dragon, Mrs. Radiant, or even Deco Talker. So, well, not Mrs. Radiant. I don't, I don't know why I just said that, but it's still pretty good. And, you know, Link Karibo when it comes out. Next, we have two Foolish Burial Goods. I was playing it at 3, but then it's, like... For some reason, three just felt weird, you know, like two just ended up working perfectly for me, so I just ended up just staying at two. Instant Fusion, um, you know, it's searchable with the Predator Plant combo, so, you know, there's no need to play three, and, uh, you know, it's a hard once per turn anyway, so it's not even that big of a deal. One Rota, Shuffle Reborn, I kind of explained in my other video, uh, Power Jersey, just in case you ended up getting that Dunker or that uh, Slugger out. You can honestly take it out because it doesn't, it wouldn't do too much for this build since this build is more focused around the extra deck than the main deck. But, um, you know, you can still have it there just in case. Uh, double signing deal. I ended up cutting it down to two just because of one, the life point cost, and two, you can't use the monster that you summon off a signing deal for a synchro summon. Now, notice, um, you could still use it for Ultimaya because Ultimaya doesn't count as a synchro summon. So if you have Gofu out and you drew into a signing deal, then you could just summon out one of your perfect gates or mighty sluggers and then just go into that. But um, yeah, it's something that I just found like not as necessary as I thought it was. So two is a real solid number. Triple Stadium. Um, it looks even crazier just because we're running less UA monsters, but it still works just as well. And um, just because you have so many cards that can special summon themselves. And like uh, quite a few UA monsters, like it's something that uh, honestly will be a lot more useful than you think it is. Uh, just because in this build you're running a lot of non UA cards, so it might not seem like it, but trust me, it works. So scapegoat, um, it goes into free link monsters, and it's free protection. So uh, if you draw it, you set it, and then during your opponent's turn, uh, you flip it back up, and uh, you get to go into proxy dragon, Mrs. Radiant. Or, you know, just if you want to, you can just go into a singular Link Spider and then tribute that Link Spider to go into Tribute Summon. So, Scapegoat definitely has a lot of uses. And, you know, it can even protect you from being gamed. Unless you're facing an Ultimate Conductor Tyranno, then don't activate Scapegoat. <laughs> so, one lost win. 
So Lost Wind is a card that uh, negates the effect of special monsters, and you know it's real nice because you can drop it with uh, Perfect Ace, and Perfect Ace would uh, you know negate something. And then after that, if your opponent special summons out from the extra deck, you can just set it back on your side of the field, and then next turn you get to use it again. So well, not use it again, but just use it. You know what I'm saying? So uh, the fact that it recycles itself is like half the reason why it's here. And then the other fact is that uh, you know it has to attack and you know negates effects. So it's pretty damn good. Uh, next, we have our two Mirror Forces, which is a little paranoid of Link format, because uh, you see here that we're only running Storming and we're only running uh, regular Mirror Force as well. And so um, we're not running Quaking. I used to be uh, a Quaking advocate. I used to say Quaking was the best Mirror Force out there. But um, unfortunately, I have switched because Link format, you know, Quaking wouldn't hit that one Link monster and that one Link monster, or even more, might be the reason why you lose. So, you know, just be wary of that. You can side quaking if you wanted, but you know. And lastly, we have our triple penalty box. Uh, the reason why we're still playing it at three, despite only playing uh, true two uh, foolish burial goods, is because one, it searches uh, the um, the UA spell cards, but also it's really useful in like getting rid of problem monsters, or even getting rid of like monsters your opponent has like in general, just because uh, penalty box can uh, banish. Uh, any monster that UA battles so you know even if you draw into like a puny midfielder who only has 1200 attack once per turn this guy's pretty much like getting rid of any monster that he battles so and banishing it for like literally two turns like to, to your opponent's next end phase or second end phase after this after this effect so if you do it during your turn right so let's say you activate penalty box during your turn you attack a monster that monster gets banished end of your turn your opponent goes. That's their turn. That's only one turn. So you get another turn before that monster comes back. So if you banish something crucial like a Link monster or something like a Crystal Wing or something real strong that your opponent really needed on the board, like they're going to have to go at least like two of their turns without having it on board. So that can be something real powerful. And Penalty Box is something once per turn. So if they attack into your monster and then you flip it up and then you activate its effect, that also applies as well. That's why I think Penalty Box is an amazing card. But, you know, also it can be used as like Twin Twister Bait because a lot of times when I set this card in the field, I always just set it, you know, just uh, making my opponent feel scared that, you know, I have something like a Solemn or something like that, which Solemn is another card you can play in this deck if you have it. But it's like, it's something that can just be like, okay, um, are you sure you want to, uh, you know, it's something that would bait out uh, spell and trap card destruction. And, you know, and then it's because you can banish it during your opponent's turn as well from the grave. That makes it a lot better because then you can, like the second that they twin twister it, you can banish it from grave, search a spell and trap card on their turn, you know, before you go. And yeah, so uh, extra deck. Um, if you've watched uh, the the uh, the UA combo videos, you already know like more than half of this extra deck. Um, I'm just gonna go through it slowly this time. I just went through it fast like twice. Um, I don't really think any of this needs explanation. Uh, side deck is pretty much just like random cards and kaiju's. You can also side deck a Monarch Stone Fourth. Um, more hand traps. Uh, more spawn trap card hate if you really need it and whatever else you feel like you may need maybe another ghost ogre might actually be good for you but you know yeah so this was a deck that uh was in that i used in the combo videos i didn't actually have like the regeki and the ghost dash but you know there were two cards that you could use in uas so obviously if you have them you know you can also use monarch storm Fourth, as i said before but yeah, this was pretty much the build that I use, and I just wanted to give you guys, you know, just show you guys, give you guys a little rundown of it. Uh, it it's, it's funny that I'm calling this, like, one of my shorter deck profiles, but it's still, like, a 14-minute deck profile. <laughs> and, um, yeah, it's a, it, it's a real simple deck. It, it's not anything too complicated. It, it does, it can go into some crazy combos with the extra deck, because I did get a little creative. But, you know, at the end of the day, you are going to have trouble with that extra deck space. So you're going to have to find your happy medium. Um, I guess you could like swap out the Link Spider and the Cyframe Lord Omega with the 
with the uh, Volcasaurus and the Invoked Raijin. Uh, that might be something you could do. Um, Vermilion's just going to sit in that <laughs> sit in that side deck. But, um, yeah, just uh, play test it, see how it works for you, and see what you think you need to do with the deck. Um, so, I guess that's really all I have to say for now. I, I know I stutter a lot. I, I didn't really know what I was doing here. I just decided to do this deck profile. Um, again, I'll leave the combo videos in the description and at the end of the video. Ladies and gentlemen, see you guys on the next one. Peace. Represent, 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 represent.